Professor Hassan Bai, who will present uh, the class, uh, um, sorry, the TC 278 uh, track healing of asphalt pavement materials. Thank you very much. Okay, well, good uh, morning, everyone. We are almost uh, noon. Uh, I'll try to be short because I, I hate to be the one that's separating you from lunch. For those of you have talked about eating healthy and stuff like that, we still need to eat, right? So, okay, so today we'll talk about um, uh, our work in, in TC278, CHA, which is crack healing of asphalt mix, uh, uh, mixtures or asphalt materials. And um, again, my name is Hassan Baj, and I am um, like a professor at the University of Waterloo in Canada and um, uh, Director of Center for Payment and Transportation Technology there. So if you don't know where Waterloo is, we're uh, one, one, one hour away from Toronto, which is uh, the main uh, biggest city in, in, in Canada. I think a lot of people know Toronto. Um, and um, like I'm here with uh, uh, one of my colleagues uh, from uh, Politecnico di Torino, Professor uh, Orazio Vallieri, who is, uh, who is in the picture in the audience, and uh, five of my students will be presenting this afternoon on asphalt materials. So I know that most of you come from concrete background, but we wanted to have some asphalt here. So we decided to come all together. Um, so on the agenda today, we'll talk about, I'll give you just a quick introduction and background about our, our uh, technical committee, uh, talk about self-healing materials, research on self-healing with asphalt, and an overview of the, of the activities of our, uh, of our TC. I'll be very honest with you, when I said yes to them to presenting this year, I was hoping to come in here and presenting final recommendations, but you know how lab, works, uh, lab work uh, works. Um, uh, we're, we have some delays here and there, but we have some good uh, results. So I will go and report on what we're doing, and hopefully next year uh, you will you will see our some of our deliverables and, and more more information. Um, and then in the conclusions, I present the, these deliverables contributions that we've had so far, and we plan to uh, do and in the future work and some scientific gaps and some acknowledgments. Okay, so let's start with the introduction and, and we're talking about self-healing, so let's just relax and, and try to heal ourselves uh, from inside. Um, um, sustainable development, we are all like engineers, like materials engineers, civil engineers, etc. Like, we need to care about um, sustainability and, and that is not only a buzzword, but it's, it's now becoming a big part of what we do and should be actually the central um, um, like element in, in our research. So this is the definition from the United Nations, it's a very old one, like more than 20 years, I think, now. And it's sustainable development in the development that meets the needs of the present uh, generations or the present without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their needs. So we have here PhD students or graduate students in the room. So we as older researchers, if we just do our research to meet our needs or the needs of our generation, we will just be causing problems. And one of the things, like we talked about recycling, let's say we use recycled materials and we just create linear landfills, like instead of creating sustainable roads, we create, we just use sustainable, uh, like recycled materials without thinking about their durability, that would be postponing the problem and not solving a problem. So recycling is one of the things, reduction of greenhouse emissions, um, we worked on warm technologies and cold technologies. This is not a problem with concrete, but in asphalt, uh, it's very important. Pavement reservations and now like smart pavements, adding instruments to see what happens within the pavement through its service life. And using advanced materials, polymers that has been used for many years, uh, high modulus asphalt uh, materials or high performance materials, anti-stripping agents, and what? And self-healing materials. So self-healing materials come here, actually, as part of the things that we need to consider and, 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 and use. So flexible pavements, when we say the word flexible pavements, it's we have flexible pavements with asphalt and rigid pavements with concrete. Okay, So we work on both, actually. And the flexible pavements in the, during their life, they will see many things, like thermal variations, moisture, uh, rain, snow, etc. Uh, uh, mechanical loadings and 
uh, that would lead to low temperature cracking. In Canada, we have a lot of that, not everywhere for sure. Uh, moisture would lead to frost heap, would, would, would lead to stripping and ravening of the aggregates in the pavement. But we have also rutting, which is the permanent deformation that appears on the surface of the pavement, and fatigue. And I actually did my, my PhD on fatigue. And part of my work at the PhD, I was a student member of the and we did a lot of work and published. More than 20 years ago, we published recommendations on fatigue testing. So I'm proud of that because I think that was a very important part of my, my PhD work. I wasn't just working on my own. I worked with, with a, a, a community of um, like knowledgeable uh, researchers from different countries. And as a student at that time, I learned a lot. So I encourage all the graduate students to be involved in TCs and to learn to learn from there and, and to build on this for their future career. So the, everything that's happening would lead to failure. And, and cracking is one of the major things that we're facing. So cracking happens uh, due to repeated loading. That's like fatigue is the definition of fatigue, okay? Repeated loading of heavy trucks. We don't care about cars and when, it, when it comes to, <laughs> to cracking of the pavement. Although we care about the emissions that they produce, for sure, but not, not the damage that they cause to the pavement. Low temperature cracking, as I explained, in, in a country like Canada, uh, is a major issue. And we're now seeing more and more issues of cr premature cracking. That is, we are putting, and excuse this word, we're putting sometimes rubbish in the binder. This is what I referred to earlier, like the, the See, recycling just for the sake of recycling will, will cause problems. So these, these pictures were taken one year after the construction by a civil engineer that I mentioned here, Dr. Ludmila Zorowski. In Canada, one year after the construction, we have trucks. Why? Like, this is it's not supposed to happen, right? So we need to be careful. We need to be responsible as engineers. So because cracking is an, an important issue, self healing becomes a potential solution, right? One of the potential solutions that we need to consider. So some history of, on, on, on uh, self healing. So research on self healing started more than 20 years ago now. And, and uh, the late professor Scott White here in the middle of that picture published the first paper on self healing um, in, uh, in nature uh, in 2001. And the idea there, like this is a, just an illustration of what they do, is that they use caps, uh, capsules that include materials that would, or, or liquids that would uh, provoke healing. And, and the, some people are using this idea in the, in the asphalt uh, now. Uh, this is the first book published on self-healing materials, and again, uh, more than like, roughly 15 years ago, I think. And if you see in the introduction, it says, the author says, self-healing materials are no more an illusion. That was like oh, 13, 14 years ago. So we're still there. They're, they're no more an illusion, but we need really to continue uh, our research in order to make it a reality, not only no more an illusion, right? This is another example of NASA. Like It's a very ambitious program to create self healing materials for spaceships. Um, spaceships are much more expensive than asphalt, so they can afford more expensive solutions like specific monitors that we tried actually in the asphalt uh, a little bit. And this is another case uh, of Case Western Reserve University uh, of a coating material that um, uh, when, when cut actually it redistributes the, itself and rearranges um, uh, itself and, and creates self healing. So some examples of the different materials. Again, as I said just earlier, well, asphalt and concrete are construction materials. People ex don't expect them to be very expensive, right? So we need to come up with also solutions that are uh, feasible by the industry. So research on self-healing, like there is, um, um, and, and before saying in the asphalt, before going there, I wanted just to explain what is asphalt, because maybe some people in the room don't know that. So asphalt is a composition, like is a concrete, actually, composed of uh, aggregates a binder, which is the bitumen, or the asphalt cement, or asphalt binder, uh, depending on where you are, um, mixed together uh, with some energy. Energy to heat, like to heat the aggregates to dry the moisture, because we don't want water in the, in the mix. But also uh, energy to mix them all together. And um, we know that the materials have different behaviors. So typically we have 4 to 7% 
uh, 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 in a mass of binder in it. It represents most of the cost, but uh, uh, like and it's the most important part of the mix. The aggregates are very very important. They represent almost roughly uh, ninety five percent, and the energy represents ten to fifteen percent of the cost of the mix. And in terms of behavior, the components are very different. So we have the viscosity that comes from the asphalt, uh, asphalt cement. <laughs> okay, Every, everything's called asphalt here. And and uh, um, elastic. Let's just simplify or oversimplify elasticity that's coming from the aggregates. So when we talk about healing, this is a co this is if we look about uh, look at uh, slice with the microscope. So we we'll see the mortar, which is the bitumen mixed with the finer fine aggregates or the filler. We have limestone aggregates here, for example, and air voids. And when we talk about healing, what will heal there? If we have a crack, do you think that the aggregates will heal? If they crack, I don't think so. It's the asphalt. So we focus on the healing on, on the healing of the binder actually. And because it's a viscous material, and unlike in the Portland cement concrete, we talk about viscosity only only at the fresh state. The viscosity in the asphalt continues, the viscous behavior continues, and depending on the temperature, what temperature, um, the ambient temperature, the temperature of the asphalt, this viscous behavior can be predominant, and when the asphalt melts, we think that it would self heal. So this is what we wanted to, to investigate. This is a video, maybe a lot of you know, uh, Professor Schlangen from uh, TU Delft, and when we started the TC, Professor Schlangen was the deputy chair of the TC, uh, and then for personal reasons, actually, um, uh, he stepped down. Uh, but this is a, a very famous video of him. You see him very nervous, like he cracked an asphalt sample, put it in the microwave together, and then he kept holding it for some time because he was worried, like, what if it doesn't work and it didn't talk? Like, it's a problem, right? So this is why I never use any, <laughs> any demos like this. But it was successful, and the crack healed, actually. Like, he demonstrated that we can heal cracks in the asphalt uh, by, by doing that, by increasing the temperature, like putting together the two parts, increasing the temperature in the microwave. Uh, they, we don't use microwave in the real life, we use induction. This is another solution. Uh, but that was one of the videos and the early um, uh, works on asphalt. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time on definitions. You will have this, this video, but that self-healing is the ability of the material to return to the initial operating state, okay? And you can continue reading if you wish. Uh, but we have two types uh, of healing, the intrinsic, sorry, intrinsic healing that happens within the material by the properties of the material will lead to this healing. And asphalt, we believe, that has intrinsic healing capabilities. And we have the extrinsic healing when we provoke it. So when we like put the, the, the cracked asphalt in the microwave, this we are provoking the healing. When we add materials to it, when we add uh, uh, admixtures or, 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 or capsules or things like that, or fibers that would heal in, through induction, so we are provoking the healing, so we're talking about extrinsic healing. Okay, so the early researches on asphalt cracking have started in, in the 60s uh, of the 20th century, and these are some uh, this is some uh, some old pictures actually showing that the cracks will heal. And we did similar things in our lab uh, when we hosted uh, cluster F. Uh, cluster F is is uh, the last cluster in the list of cluster Ryan clusters. I hosted the meeting in 2019, and we, my students present in the room actually, like Rob and, and Dandy, uh, 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 did this in the lab. So they broke the sample, put it back in the oven at certain temperature, and we demonstrated that healing, healing happened. Um, again, all the researchers, like from um, later, the research continues. So with uh, Basil and Sonier, 1967. Um, other people continued, Chantal de la Roche from Eastar worked on healing in 2000 and, and this is some of the, her work where we can see that it's, this is a fatigue test, so you can see here that the modulus drops and during fa uh, 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 the phase 2, which is, which is a rest period, the modulus will increase again. And then we restart the loading at the modulus, modulus drop or the stiffness drops. Okay, that's the blue blue curves are loading curves and the red curves are rest periods. 
curves, and we see that the property that we were considering here is, is the uh, modulus. This is from De La Roche and the other researchers from France. And this is during my PhD in a little bit more than 20 years, uh, published in 2002, same thing, same concept we did. So tension compression uh, on, on, on the um, uh, asphalt sample that you can see here with rest periods. However, now when we talk about healing, we need to think about something. Like, if you look at this cartoon, uh, the gentleman was looking for a penny that he lost in the street, and the policeman came and asked him, what are you doing? He said, I'm looking for a penny. Okay, did you lose it here? No. So why are you looking for it here? Because there's more light, right? We use sometimes oversimplified tests or methods just because they're easy, because they're cheap, because they're available. But will they really give me the answer? No, not necessarily. So when we decided that we need to think about creating a technical committee, we thought, okay, there are ways to do track healing. Let's focus on testing methods. Let's see how we can really first start by evaluating and assessing healing. So that is the most important thing. And what is damage? What is not damage? You will, you will see what I'm talking about. And um, here are some... Uh, methods on uh, uh, like healing that are used now but maybe we'll look at them in, in a phase two of this uh, of this project so we started this uh, committee uh, um, six five six years ago and and uh, i don't know if you're aware we had a, a global pandemic for a couple of years <laughs> so the global pandemic affected us like everybody else for sure we had some delays but uh, we, I think we managed to, to do uh, some good job there. So uh, we started in Montreal and during, during the cluster meeting uh, with three uh, TGs, the task groups. So the first one focuses on the state of the art, the second one on experiment, experimental work, and the third one on, on modeling and analysis of the, of, the, of the findings. And here are the people who are involved in in, 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 in the different TCSTGs as leading them, actually. So, Professor Horacio Bergeri, who's in the room, from Politecnico di Torino, uh, Rick, uh, Rick Water from TNO, Amir Tabagovic from TNO, they're both researchers working on healing, and, and they're leading TG1. Uh, Dr. Ferhat Hamoum, uh, leading TG2, or part of TG2 with, with Dr. Bergeri uh, on, on testing asphalt binders and mixes. And uh, uh, Salvatore Mangiatico from uh, Ecole Nationale des Travaux Publics de l'État in France, and, and he's in charge of uh, uh, the last uh, TG on the modeling. And here, here is the list of, of the organizations involved in the, in the TC. We are not a big TC, a lot of people just attend the meetings and contribute. We need to do something, you know, but I, these people, a lot of them contributed. And uh, and we have we don't have so many people maybe 20 people uh, like are really very active uh, in in, uh, in what we do. What we did uh, we organized when in 2019 when I hosted the uh, cluster meeting I thought that it's a great idea because we have experts from from everywhere so. Uh, I organized uh, high performance asphalt materials with focus on healing and, and that was our, our first event that we, we organized. Uh, that was in Canada, Waterloo. Uh, we also, the t t under the TC's activities, uh, Dr. Chao Wong from uh, uh, Beijing uh, University of Technology organized a workshop uh, in 2019. That was my last trip before the, the lockdown, December 2019 in Beijing. Um, and um, we also, uh, with two other TCs, uh, organized an international symposium in Lyon that was supposed to happen in person, but finally happened uh, online. Uh, and you will find the proceedings outside, actually, on one of the tables um, uh, with uh, Hervé Di Benedetto that everyone knows who was my PhD supervisor and other great researchers. Uh, we, um, uh, we worked on, on, on the proceedings and they're available uh, for you to read. So TG1, and very quickly I will just uh, talk about the activities, I think I have five minutes. So TG1 is state of the art and, and uh, we are working, we, we almost finalized 
uh, this power, now we are revising it. Uh, there are some chapters that still need more work. So we will work, uh, well, the star will focus on really state of the art, not what our added knowledge, but actually the existing knowledge. So we have nine chapters, and I think they are all important, but the last one will be maybe the more important, most important one, which is the gaps and uh, needs in asphalt cracking uh, research. And this is the one that we need to read, uh, to write, still, actually. Um, in addition to the STAR, we already published a paper, um, I think an important paper on, on uh, terminology and definitions. And, and actually what happens in a, an asphalt test with the asphalt, uh, well, fatigue test with the asphalt, is that we have three phases. So at the beginning, the property that we're looking at, which is the modulus here, drops significantly. But does it drop because of fatigue? Actually, no. 90% of the of the drop, or maybe more, is can be attributed to nonlinearity, to uh, to self look at heating because the material is very sensitive to the changes of temperature and exotropy. So what happens is that when when we do a, a healing test, and then in the middle we have mainly healing, and then a micro cracks appear in phase three. What happens actually if we do a healing test when we stop the loading? You can see the material that the property drops. We stop the loading, and the, the, we have a recovery, or I, we call it here a restoration. A lot of people they publish and they say this is healing. Actually, it's not. It's like you you take I don't know honey or or ketchup and, and you agitate it. It becomes liquid, like more or less more fluid, less viscous. But in reality, when you stop this agitation, leave it, it will go back and become so, like semi-solid again. This is not healing. There was no damage, right? And this is what we need to differentiate. We need to differentiate restoration, which is the whole everything, from self-healing and recovery. Recovery is just recovering from irreversible, from sorry, reversible phenomena. Healing is recovering from irreversible, irreversible damage. So we need to really to know what we're talking about, and this is why we, we define what is damage, restoration, recovery, what's self-healing, right? And this is, I think, one of the maybe, maybe not biggest contributions, but at least important contribution that people now, when they follow these, they follow these definitions and use these terminology. In TG2, and these are uh, PhD students at the University of Waterloo, so we have experimental testing, so we have two parts. TG1A focuses on binders and TG1B focuses on mixes and I will accelerate here. So the binders one, we tested different binders. In phase one, we focused on testing different methods and in phase two, we just selected one method and we did more work on it. So I'm not going to, to spend a lot of time on these slides. These are the labs that contributed to phase one. And, and as outcome of phase one, we found that the different methods will give us different trackings. So the committee decided that, okay, let's focus on the most promising one, which is the linear, uh, linear amplitude um, uh, um, healing test with healing, actually. A sweep, linear amplitude sweep test with healing, uh, with rest periods, and we decided to go ahead with this, with this one we found more challenges. Like, my student here can testify, he did some image analysis. We have, like, we have the test. So there is more work that needs to be, to be done here. But at least we are on, we have some promising uh, data that we, we know what the problem is and we're working on solutions. Not spending again a lot of time, this is uh, the second paper that was published uh, on different, different methods and the, uh, the results from phase one. Um, and my student Dandy here in the room uh, is working on, on, on healing of mixes and we have, we have four tests, different tests. Two are tension compression, one in torsion and one uh, using dynamic uh, high frequency healing with rest periods. That's the, I will show you some pictures. I explained this before, so the rest periods that we introduce, etc. So this is the work for, in France uh, from uh, UNTB, uh, University of Lyon, just to make it easier. Uh, tension compression, but what they did is that they inserted a thermocouple inside the sample during the test, so they can quantify this local heating that happens during phase one, which is very important. 
Um, this is the test in Torsion, University of Limoges uh, is doing that, and Torsion is also another difficult test to conduct, but really very, very useful. Do you see the different materials that they were tested give different results, which is normal, actually anticipated. And uh, this is the work that we're doing at the University of Waterloo. So we're doing tension compression, and Rob is implementing ultra ultrasonic transducers within the sample. So we see what happens during rest periods without the impact of bias effects. So we've tried to, to eliminate them, and we have some, some promising results. These are the three materials that are involved. Uh, and finally, Dandy's work, Dandy Zhao here in the room, uh, she's doing indirect tensile loading, uh, creating a crack, and watching what happens during rest periods um, with, uh, with uh, using, using ultrasonic testing. So she told me to click here and click here at the same time so you can see what happens. So we go to the maximum, we stop the loading, and then during this, we're doing, during this rest period, we have the measurements, and then we load again until the failure and we're watching on the right side like the ultrasonic output signals and we have very interesting findings. This is my, not my area of expertise, we have a top-notch expert at the University of Waterloo who's helping us with, with the ultrasonic testing, Professor Giovanni Cascanti. And finally, the analysis, uh, TG3, uh, we want to, again, try to find methods and models that will quantify this true healing, just eliminate everything that we don't want uh, from, from testing. Um, and we have actually three labs that are doing active work on this using different methods, viscoelastic continuum damage, classical analysis of G-star variation or the stiffness variation of the binder, and fracture energy analysis. Um, again, I will just skip these, these two slides that illustrate one of the methods and go to the deliverables and the contributions. So, uh, we proposed a homogenized terminology and, and that was published and people start to use it and which is, I think, very important. Uh, we, as I explained, we organized a couple of international workshops and contributed to the International Symposium of Betonous Materials, which was a very successful event in, in Lyon. Um, a state-of-the-art report uh, is on the way, hopefully it will be published or, or at least submitted before the end of the year. Our plan is to finish this year. We want it to be done today, but, uh, you know. And um, we are also planning or working on three Rylan technical letters uh, from the three uh, technical committees. For the future, we think that another TC would be, would be a good idea if someone takes the lead on this and uh, to elaborate the recommendation of the testing and investigate and propose testing methods to evaluate extrinsic healing because we covered only intrinsic and also propose a framework for a mechanistic pavement design that takes into account healing because it's not enough to come up with healing self-healing materials we need to use them properly in pavement design and uh, like do the pavement design based on, uh, on this knowledge um, and I would like to thank our industry partners who contributed and gave us materials, all the active members of the committee who contributed to everything, and uh, the TC deputy chair and TG leaders who helped me a lot in this presentation. And uh, never forget our graduate students, Dandy Zhao, Frank William, uh, Fabrizio uh, Milieta, uh, Haya Muteri, and Rob uh, uh, Aurelio, three of them are in the room, and two others from other universities from Lyon and, and Politecnico who really contributed a lot to the work. So, and without them we cannot do anything, right? So thank you very much and that concludes my presentation. <laughs>